Welcome back to This is a Sign. In this video, you'll learn how to create this Y2K inspired logo. The tools we'll be using are Adobe Illustrator and Blender 3.0. If you want to learn how to make this, keep watching. The first thing I like to do is look for inspiration on websites like Pinterest or Behance. In this case, I chose Pinterest. I looked up Y2K logos and see what popped up. Most Y2K logos have things in common, like geometric designs, bold typography, and also bold colors. I took this as a starting point to create my own personalized logo. To start off my basic design, I'm using Adobe Illustrator. I grabbed the type tool and typed in Y2K. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to type, but ultimately this is what I went with. I went through my font list to see what kind of font I wanted. I did want to stick with a Y2K version, but I also wanted it to make it unique to me. Like for example, this font is very Y2K, but ultimately I did not go end up going with that one. I went with this font called Melted Monster. It's like a jerpy font. And I thought that once we took it to Blender, it looked really cool. Like I said, most Y2K's logo have some type of geometric design. With the, For this logo, I went with this classic oval design so I grabbed my lips tool and I created two ovals I filled one with a different color so I could see how I was shaping it better and once I got the shape that I desired I highlighted both ovals and I went to the pathfinder tool and I click subtract so it could make a hole in the middle I then rotated it or positioned it how I wanted it um, the good thing about y2k logos is that things don't have to be perfect and there's a lot of leeway to make it personalized. I then decided I wanted to make a little star or twinkle. So I grabbed the ellipse tool and I went to the effects tab and then I press pucker and bloat and I adjusted the shape. I wanted to add some sort of shape to the background of the typography. So I grabbed the rounded rectangle tool and then I use the curvature pen to add points to the actual shape so I could further adjust it and make it look like it was like more closely aligned to the shape of the letters. I'm pretty much done with the basic design so I made sure I expanded the appearance of the twinkle and created an outline for the text or else it won't show up correctly on Blender. Now I'm ready to export. Make sure that you export this file as an SVG because once we go to Blender, we're going to upload it as an SVG. Now that you're on Blender, make sure you go to File, Import, SVG. It's probably going to appear very small, so just highlight everything and press S on your keyboard to scale it up and RX 90 on your keyboard to rotate its axis 90 degrees. As you can see, everything's super flat. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to join the letters so it's one single object. So go ahead and highlight all the letters and then right click your mouse and press join. We're now going to add some depth to the object. We do that by going to the data object properties panel and within the geometry tab, you add an extrusion. Um, you can adjust the number to whatever you'd like it to be. I went ahead and did that to every single object. I wanted to add a plane to the background just so we can see everything a little bit better. And I will also use this as my background for when I'm ready to render. So I did that by going to add mesh plane. I'm now ready to make everything look nicer by softening the edges and inflating the object. So I do that by first converting the object to a mesh and then going to the modifier properties and remeshing it. For this case, I use smooth and I put it up to a number where I could see my full object, which in this case was nine. And then I went over to sculpt mode. I started off with the inflate tool and I went all over my letters with it. By the way, you can adjust the strength of the tool all the way at the top as well as the radius of the tool. So I went ahead and did that. I went ahead and grabbed the smooth tool and I went over my letters with it. As you can see, this makes everything just look better. And you can go and back, back and forth to these tools until you feel like it's up to your standards. Lastly, I went in with the bulb tool and it's kind of like the inflate tool, but it's just makes everything rounder. So that's what I did. I did the same exact method to every single object. So I started from like, you know, converting it to a mesh then remeshing it then taking sculpt mode and using the 
inflate tool, the bulb tool, and the smooth tool to make everything look cohesive. Now you should be ready to add materials to your, your object. So I slid over a new tab and I converted it into a shade editor tab. And I slid that over and removed the existing material and added a new one. And like I said, I, I did this to every single object. And it wouldn't be me if I didn't make everything chrome. So I went ahead and put the metallic to one and the roughness to zero. And if your material is looking grainy like this, just right click your mouse and shade smooth it and the graininess should go away. I wanted to add a environment texture so I can render it soon. So I changed the shade editor tab from object to world and I added an environment texture and then I uploaded an HDRI. I get all my HDRIs for free from polyhaven.com. You can play around with it. It really changes the look of your object. So this is the one I initially went with, but then I went ahead and changed it. I also added a material to my mesh plane. I went with black. I felt like that would make the chrome stand out the most. To me, it was looking a bit plain at this point. So I wanted to add a goopy texture. Um, so I went to add meta ball and these meta balls are pretty cool. They're like magnetic. So it's pretty easy to make goopy textures. So I started with one and then I just kept copying, pasting that one and adjusting it to my liking. Once I was done adjusting, I clicked them and then converted them to a mesh. That way they're just one single object and I can add a material to all of them at once. At this point, that square plate I had behind the letters looked a bit boring to me. So I just um, smoothed the edges a bit and I utilized the grab tool to make it more abstract. This is the initial shape I went with. I thought it looked a little too crazy. Let me know in the comments if I should have kept this shape, but I was just trying out materials on it. This pink did look pretty cool. I'm kind of regretting it now, but whatever. At this point, I was adjusting the lighting and I kind of liked how the light made that back object look like it was like ombre or whatever. So I was like, let me not depend on the light. I'm gonna actually make this object like a gradient effect. So I added an image texture to the actual object. And you do this by just uploading like a blank um, image that's just white. And then you go to UV editing and make sure you're on wireframe mode and you highlight all the points. And then at the top, you go to UV and press Smart UV Project, and now you're ready to actually paint on the object. So you switch from UV editing to texture paint, and as you can see on the side panel, there's like a paintbrush, and you go ahead and go to Render Preview so you can actually see better, and you pick a color that you want, and you start painting on the object. I wanted this blue gradient, so I just went with like a dark blue and a light blue, and then I went with the smooth, I think that it's, that's what it's called, it's like a smooth tool within the texture paint app, so I can smooth the edges of the gradient out a bit more. In order to actually see what you did on texture paint, um, you're going to have to exit out of Blender and save the file and a little window should pop up that said save modified images and you press yes and then get back on blender and you should be set so you can see it when you render out and that pretty much concludes the tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed it let me know if you have any other video suggestions because i've really been on a drought when it comes to design at this point i'm like a bit uninspired but I want to keep going with this YouTube thing because I know it'll pay off at the end. But yeah, make sure you like, you comment, and you subscribe. And make sure you turn your post notifications on so you know the next time I post. I promise it will not be as long as it's been. I'm going to try to be more consistent. Bye!